ladies and gentlemen, uh, we, now for our next presenter. Uh, this is a very well-experienced uh, individual uh, in a variety of different markets. His name is Tom Busby. Uh, his trading career dates back to the late 1970s, uh, quoted and published in Futures Magazine and Active Trader Magazine, and he actively trades and invests in futures, stocks, options, and currencies. Uh, he's had guest appearances, include CNN, First Business News, MoneyShow.com, uh, and even Steve Crowley's American Scene Radio. Uh, he's recognized as one of the first educators to trade live in front of an audience, uh, as well as Tom also authored Winning the Day Trading Game, The Markets Never Sleep, and Trade to Win. Uh, Tom founded DTI in 1996, and with his more than 30 years of trading experience, has really helped thousands of students uh, become better strangers. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make Tom Busby uh, the presenter, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, here you go. All right, if you can hear me okay, I'll get started. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me, and um, uh, hopefully you, when you leave today, I get you thinking about this game of trading. I've been doing it a long time uh, and have survived, and I survived by educating myself and then uh, being able to you know, take, it's, a, it's not an easy game, it's a rough game, but to take the game and learn uh, some of the things you can do to improve your eyes. Uh, first of all, uh, we get to the slide presentation over here. DTI, we, had, we started in 1996. Uh, I like to talk about risk first because I think a lot of people, when they look at risk, they look at it after the fact. Uh, before we do any trading or before we teach people how to trade, we always talk about the risk that's involved. Uh, I sort of look at it like a baseball team. If you've got a baseball team, you will notice that the winning baseball teams are the ones that have good 5th, 6th, 7th, and 8th batters. Uh, those are the teams that win. You know, look at the Boston Red Sox, uh, won the World Championship this year. They had a solid lineup. So I would tell you to look at uh, what you're good at and then improve what you're not good at. And that would be some advice I'd give you right from the get-go. First of all, I want to thank you. I want to thank the uh, people from MTI for inviting me today. It's a Saturday, and that means you got desire. If you're on a Saturday, that means you're putting in an extra time. You're trying to get a little extra edge. And, um, and I'm going to give you a couple things today. It took me a lot of years to learn, but it might help you as you're trying to analyze the market. Uh, if you will, um, this is, and I put this up front because uh, really, my presentation is more than more than today. What I'm going to do um, every Sunday night for my subscribers, I lay out what I see in the market, where I see the opportunities in the market, and I do that on Sunday night. So if you fill out a roadmap survey, tell me a little bit about yourself, we'll send you an invitation and let you come in there tomorrow night to watch how we lay out next week. A lot of people that see the way we do it, they know it's unique, but it's right up front. It tells you where, uh, where the uh, what I call the low-hanging fruit is going to be. And they should have put the survey link in there. I don't know if they did or not. Okay. Perfect. And Sunday night at 8 when I kick off my week. I do this in a certain pattern. I find that emotions have a lot to do with your results. You know, you, you know, you if you if you sort of do something, uh, and this if you'll think about it, you, you build a checklist. And that checklist sort of is how you approach the market. So the way I approach the market, um, on Sunday night I do my plan for the week. And I notice that I notice that when I do it this way, I start thinking about things. I go to bed Sunday night and I sleep about my thoughts and the way I'm going to execute the market. And I think this helps a lot of people uh, when they come into the market during the week. All right, a little bit about myself. I graduated from the University of Georgia, Oklahoma City Law School. I was an officer in the United States Air Force. Uh, Vice President Smith Barney uh, when I was in the brokerage business. I'm a current member of the CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange. 
I think I'm the only one in the state of Alabama. So I've been a member for a lot of years. Uh, and I started DTI, Diversified Trading Institute, in 1996. Let me tell you how I got here. 1973. Welcome to GoToWebinar. Webinar is made easy. I remember from, uh, from that training was we wore this t-shirt. And that t-shirt said, do not cheat or steal or tolerate those that do. I've operated my whole career by that premise. So if you, whatever I say, you can take it to the bank. I'm going to do what I say. And, and the people at my company is going to do what they say. 1987, um, I was a Wall Street, uh, I guess, uh, phenom at the time. I made a lot of money. I was arrogant. And 1987 came along, October 19th, and I found out that what I had learned in all those years really was the wrong stuff. And I got killed on that day. I lost a lot of money in 1987. But from that, what I, which I used to think was the worst day of my career, actually it turned out to be the best day of my career. Because what I've learned will help you survive in this market. You got to be persistent. You study this game of trading. You know, people talk about last year being up 33 uh, percent in all the indexes, and they say a blind man could have made money last year. Well, a lot of people lost money last year. Why? They were probably trying to short the market because they got some formula that told them something was overvalued. I always tell people that there's never been a formula created that will tell you something's overvalued or undervalued. I tell people that you've got to watch the tape, learn the tape. And the tape is how the market moves, how the stock moves, and how to buy and sell at the correct time. I tell people that you're only going to be able to do your best every day, one day at a time. You don't worry about yesterday. You focus on today. I'll give you an example. Um, I don't know if you saw Friday's market, but Friday's market was a market that started off strong, and ended week. I don't know if any of you were watching Friday's market, but at 6 o'clock in the morning, I told my subscribers, I said, I don't know what I'm seeing. I've been watching these markets for a long time, but there's something about today's market. I couldn't put my finger on it. It wasn't the numbers. There's something about today's market. I believe it's going to end up weak. And that was a, you might call it a gut. You might call it something else, but it's just the experience of being around for over 30-something years. Risk management's got to be your first priority, and never risk money you can't afford to lose. If you will take, if you will take the following sentence, and after you do a trade or do an investment, analyze that investment, try to walk away with some lesson. Keep a little notebook, and this is what I encourage you: keep a notebook by your computer. Write down what happened and refer back to that notebook over your uh, time that you're trying to conquer this game. You will get better at this game because you won't make the same mistake over and over again. You know, I used to tell people, people used to say, hey, Tom, I made money in the morning and I lost money in the afternoon. You know what I told them? Quit trading in the afternoon. Use common sense when you approach the market. A couple of about, uh, little about my books. Uh, thanks, Josh, for mentioning. The first book was Winning the Day Trading Game. Uh, it was a book I put together in, uh, I think it was 2005. It's in 11 different languages. Uh, it talks about my approach to analyzing the basics of the market. It's a bestseller. It's, uh, it's got some pretty good thoughts in there. It sort of takes us through some of the ups and downs that I had and things that I was told that were not true, and things that are true about the market. Now here's where we start separating ourselves from everybody else. We use the global market. The, it, we use Asia, we use Europe, we use uh, U.S. early and the U.S. late. It's actually two markets in one in the U.S. based on the time. I always tell people, look where the sun is, you'll know where the news counts, and you know where it doesn't count, you know where the sun is. That was my second book. The third book's Trade to Win. Uh, Ned Bennett from uh, Options Express 
said this is one of the best books he ever read. It's called Trade to Win. And it's really more about an attitude that you got to have to win. You're open-minded. You're always trying to learn something. Even those people you don't agree with can teach you. And I would encourage you to just continue to absorb the education that's offered to you because that will make you a better trader. Uh, let me give you a website, and, um, and, and I think it's a good website you can go to, but it talks about how Wall Street values stocks. It's totally free. It's called trefis.com. It's T-R-E-F-I-S. I thought about that when I was listening to the previous speaker. I said, that's a good website. You already have it. Get it. Since he used to work for me, I thought he might mention it, but trefis.com is a good website. All right, DTI. Been around a long time. Uh, we treat people the way they want to be treated. We do what we say, and we will teach you how to do this game of trading if you will listen. Here's our building in Mobile. It's uh, I built it in 2001. A lot of people's been there. Uh, inside that building is a state-of-the-art educational facility. The whole goal of me building this building in Mobile, Alabama, was to give you a place that you could go and learn this game of trading. We have our own special software. The software that I created was a little bit different from what Wall Street offered. It was created, in my estimation, uh, because I needed the tools to get me on the right side of the market. And it's pretty neat stuff. Hopefully I get a chance to show it to you. Uh, we have a radio show now in Atlanta, Georgia. You can listen to it on the internet, 1190 AM every day at uh, 10 o'clock Central Time. And on that show, we strictly talk about different ways and different techniques to figure out what direction the sucker's going to go. Again, be persistent, study the game. Keep risk management at the top of anything you do in the market. If you will study your losses that you make and figure out why you lost money, then you can eliminate those losses and that in itself will make you a better trader. Now here's something new this year that we, uh, we, that we have. It's totally free. I encourage you to become uh, a, get a hold of our app. We'll send you uh, every day. We put out market insights. Uh, about seasonals, we put out things that uh, a market you ought to look at, and it's totally free. You can go to, uh, if you have an iPhone, or if you have an Android, you can go to the, uh, the store and download it, or you just click that website right there and get it. People, people love it. One of our students made this for us. All right, I wanted to start out today before I got into the main presentation and talk about the 7-Eleven rule. Now, you won't hear about the 7-Eleven rule for most people that don't understand the market. The 7-Eleven rule is a rule that I came up with to help keep you on the right side. I'm going to give, you the, I'm going to give it to you, and then, and then I'll bring up my roadmap at the end of this and show you how it works. But I want you to write down the following things. Number one, you've got to know about the S&P, Standard & Poor's. You've got to know about the NASDAQ. What you look for is a low or a high in both these indexes, and you look for that low or high to hold at least for an hour in the course of trading. Mark off seven points on the S&P, mark off 11 points on the NASDAQ, and you've got the direction. You will find with this simple technique, you can stay on the right side of the daily trend. That's right, the right side of the daily trend. If you were watching uh, last week, this rule went off about uh, seven times for the week. Seven times you had the odds in your favor of having the direction right as you were entering and exiting the market with a simple rule. You don't need charts to do it. You just need to know the lows and the highs to do this rule. Now, today I want to talk about fear. Overcoming fear in trading. I find a lot of people do not succeed in the market because it's almost they're afraid they're going to lose. Well, guess what? Let's just eliminate that fear. 
you are going to have losses. So deal with those losses. But make the losses stay contained inside the plan that you use. Again, you're going to have losses. If you get into the market, you take risks, you're going to have losses. I don't care what you do, whether you're buying stocks, whether you're buying options, whether you're buying futures, you're going to have losses. The key to losses is build it inside your plan. For example, I will tell people I use a $300 risk on any trade I do. Here's how it works. If I bought a stock for $50, then I would get out of that stock if it went below $47. $3, $300. If I bought a NASDAQ future, then I would risk about 10 points on that NASDAQ future. Again, $300. If I can't buy that stock or that NASDAQ futures inside that $300 risk per contract, then I, won't, then I won't pursue it. I'll back away. So that's sort of a limiting filter I use. Take that and go back through the, the trades that you've done and say, what if I just lost $300? How, would, how much better off would I be over your last 50 trades if you use that one simple rule? This is how you're going to overcome the fear of trade. Now, fear is created because of your emotions, because you've had these past experiences. And these past experiences will interfere with your current mindset. You have to get control of that. Really, it's just false evidence appearing real. Now, how do you overcome fear? The first way you overcome fear is have a good plan. A good plan is going to be the first step because you're going to think out things. You know and I know in anything you succeed in life, if you run a business, you had to have a plan. You had to have a cash flow plan. You had to have an anticipation of marketing plans. Wonderful, have a great product but you still got to have people that buy that product. So having a plan is your first step. And today, before I started next week, if I was you, I would lay out my plan and approach for next week's market. I'd do it one week at a time. That works better than anything I've ever found is to look at the market one week at a time. Now, I tell people that you have to avoid negative thought patterns. Therefore, if you're around people that are negative, avoid those people. Get around positive people. Positive people have positive results. You know, you talk about 30 plus years of being in the market. I will tell you this as a fact. I have never met a pessimist that made any money. Never met one. I've never seen a pessimist understand the market, he gets slanted in his thinking, and then he, you know, he projects that as being the rules. That's not the rules. What you do is you surround yourself in a positive community of trade. And you always, always look at both sides, positive and negative. We all have fear. You know, there's fear of whether you're going to make money on this trade or make money on this investment. Accept the downside. That's the first step. Accept the downside. Now, if you do like I do, limit it to $300, you say, I don't take the trade unless I can stand the $300 per contract. It's not the enemy. You just control it and plan it. Now, how do traders get past fear to be successful? It's pretty simple. They start out with a plan. On Sunday night, we have our plan for the week. I will identify three opportunities next week in the market. I do it every Sunday night. Those three opportunities will be planned out. Well, when you have success doing that, your confidence grows. When your confidence grows, you know to be there on Sunday night. And then you start working this for yourself. And then you start making it happen for yourself and you get educated where you see it. Now, here's some tools I use. The roadmap software is based on a 24-hour market. Global makes it unique. We look at Asia, we look at Europe, we look at early U.S. 
a little bit later. I use futures, options, and stocks. I keep it simple. I interpret whether I'm going to be up, down, or out. Now let me ask a question. If I told you that crude oil, based on the past eight years, had a seasonally strong period from February to May, then you would say, well, that's interesting. Let me check that out. Then you go check it out and you find out, wow, that's sort of true. Crude oil is strong from February through May. That's the first thought. Then you say, okay, if crude's going to be strong from February to May, then how can I benefit from that strength? Well, first of all, you have to see the strength, right? You just can't base it on a past seasonal, but what you can do is be aware of it. Now, once you see the strength, then you can do some things. Maybe you buy oil stock. An oil stock, a good oil stock is Exxon. A good oil stock is uh, ConocoPhillips. Or you might buy a USO. Or you might even buy a futures contract. And if you're right on that scenario that crude is strong, you're going to make money. Now, what's so hard about that? Well, you have to overcome the fear. You overcome the fear because it's in your plan, and then you take the trade. Now, here's a look at our roadmap software. Let me just give you an overview of that. We track the market. Notice I got the seven sisters. I got the E-mini, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the DAX, European markets. I got gold. I got bonds. I've got crude oil. Isn't that interesting? Crude's up 85 cents on this one. Then I have five stocks, just five simple stocks to look at. Google, Amazon, Netflix, Visa, and Apple. And then I have some other markets I'm interested in. But generally speaking, I keep it simple. Now, the charts. A lot of people like charts, so I simplify charts. I put buy zones at the top, sell zones at the bottom. I put a magenta line in the middle that gives you the idea that uh, you know above that line it's bullish, below that line it's bearish. To the left, I put a little stat or two that's important about the market I'm looking at. In the case here, the E-mini moves about 20 points a day. I look at the five-day high, what is the current trend, the five-day low. I look at where it opened the week. I look at where it opened the month. So let's just look at that. It opened the month at 1600 It opened the week at 1628 We're higher than the month. We're higher than the week. Guess what? We're going up. And there we did. Look at that high of 1672 Simple charts. At the bottom, I have a little, little gadget called the horse race. And I track these based on momentum. And so I can pick out which one of these markets are the best investments. And it tracks it constantly as these markets are trading, which it takes to technology and helps me understand the trends. The custom page. I have my custom page set up with the opening in the first column. You'll find most traders put a lot of emphasis on the close. I look at where a market opens, decide who's winning or losing. By the way, if you look at this year's market in the S&P, I simplified. Let's simplify 2014 for you. If you take the S&P, it opened at 1837. You're currently at 1837 right now. If you take a 20-point average true range, that would put you at 1857, or it would put you at 1817. If we get above 1857, the trend is positive, and you can buy the market, and we'll go higher. If it goes below 1817, the trend's lower, and you can sell the market. What's that going in the next week? Because we close at 1837. It's just a guideline to help get you on the right side. DTR page. Now, I like to track certain markets that I trade a lot. I like to track those on a half-hour basis because I like the numbers. So if I'm looking at the market right here on the E-mini, and, in, in, and I was trying to find where support is, it would be easy for me to see about 1670 would be the E-mini support. 
And so in real time, I got real time numbers to trade off of. And there's the compass and what the compass does and how to use the compass uh, whether it's fine. This is a neutral market I'm looking at. The horse race, if you look right here, this is a picture of, I don't know if you follow Apple, but uh, Apple on Friday was heading down and, and my technology told me it was heading down. And then you look at the price and it told me we're heading down. So Apple was going down on Friday. That's the way I use that particular feature. Now, here's a unique way to compare a lot of different markets. If you can figure out where the S&P is going, you can figure out where these stocks are going. For example, if you see the S&P right here is 1812, you see Google's at 1147. The S&P's at 1837 now, I think Google's around 1200. But this goes up and down the scale, and this is an old uh, picture of the, uh, of the tracks. This is kept current throughout the day in a live market, and you can keep up to speed on all the current numbers. It's a unique way to look at a lot of different markets at once. All right, my approach. I know the seasonal markets to trade. All right, I sort of let the cat out of the bag about crude oil. I told you crude was going higher from February to May. Now, what did I do with that information? It's one thing to know that. I started watching crude. I started watching the price of crude. Crude was about $98 a barrel when I first got into crude, and I started talking about crude, about, hey, we're in February, crude's going high. What did I do with that information? I said, February, March is going to be very strong. I said, go long crude, and we'll make some money. So how are we going to go long crude? So I looked at the news. I planned my week. I put the seasonal patterns on top of that, and then I set up my schedule. Sunday night, I told people, I said, here's the way that we can make money off crude. I stress going long crude. I press the numbers go long crude. Notice crude broke higher, got above the midpoint, and of course, how do we do it? Well, I told you you could buy it in stock. We bought US up. Everybody's familiar with that ETF. I bought BP. I'm still in BP. And this is the real play right here. I said, now for those that really want to accelerate this move, it's going to happen this week, we're going to buy ERX. I don't know if you're familiar with ERX or not, but we bought some options on the ERX. I turned 15,000, 30,000 within 48 hours on ERX, all because crude was Supposed to go higher, did go higher. After it went higher, the options and derivatives went higher. And I did that by risking $300 a contract. I bought it at 30 cents. This was a futures option I bought for 30 cents, which is 300 bucks. Sold it at 59 cents. This is how it works, but you gotta have a plan. Now, I also take into account What's happening in the market? Okay. Now this is for the week of the 24th. If you look, coming into next week over the last 21 years, you'll see Monday is a pretty firm day. But look at Tuesday and the Dow. Everybody see that? That's called a seasonal day. So I would look for weakness in the Dow on Tuesday. And because of that, I'll probably take some profit in some loans I have going into Tuesday. And that sort of gives you a ballpark of what Dow looks like. It's going to be weak all week after Tuesday. S&P eh, has one strong day, but it's pretty well weak for the rest of the week. NASDAQ strong through Thursday, weak on Friday. So the highs of the week should be made in the first part of next week based on the season. Now here's news next week. Let's talk about that. News next week includes, and I look for red stars, you got new home sales. If you've been following new home sales and you've been following the housing market, the housing market overall in longer term 
looks like it's firming up and probably will give you some opportunities to make money in the housing in, uh, sector. Uh, Thursday, you got Yellen. Every time she talks now, people are taking notes. They're watching the market's reaction. They're building a history bank on whether when she talks, the market goes up, goes down. So she's too new to tell, but she will be speaking Thursday, which is a big event. And then Thursday or Friday, we have GDP. Uh, people will be looking at for evidence of whether the Fed will be fast tapering or slow tapering. That's what they'll be looking for. So, I lay that out on Sunday night and I lay it out in more detail down to the three opportunities I see so I know when I'm going to actually trade on Sunday night versus waiting for the day to come up. I know my schedule, I have my plan, and I go into next week. So, if I've got enough time left, I don't know how much time I left, I'd like to show you my roadmap, okay? But anyway, fill out the roadmap profile if you want to be there. Uh, I'll send you a copy of that first book, the audio book. I think you'll enjoy it. And, uh, and then we'll give you an invitation to get there. Let me see if I can bring this up here. And if you've got any questions, you can send it to me at this email address. Yeah, okay, good. Let me get my, uh, let me, uh, get my roadmap up here. Adam, are you here? How do I get the roadmap in here? If Adam's here, he can help me do that, I think. I don't know, can you see the roadmap? Um, I can't tell if you can see it or not. You see that right there? I talked about the 7-Eleven. Let me just throw the S&P in here. And if you can see it, I'll show you H4. All right. Everybody see this? That low of 1832.75. If that holds in the first hour of Sunday night, you'll see this market track back up. If it breaks at 18.32, then you can add seven points. So until you get above, just go into the next week, about 18.40. You don't want to be long this market. 18.40 is the number. Hope you can see that. I can't, uh, I can't tell if you can see it or not, but 18.40 is the number. All right, again, um, I want to thank Josh and everybody for inviting me here. Uh, tomorrow night I'll, I'll lay out three trades. Here's something else that we got coming out and it's sort of neat. This is the rough draft of it. Okay. Uh, this is a newsletter that we're putting out every quarter. This is on, a, on my technology service. But anyway, this is going to be the way it's laid out. If you do fill out the survey, I'll give you a free copy of the first one we issue. But educations. I'm actually long a silver stock called PAAS. Uh, I'm also long a Hershey. Uh, been long Hershey. It's a seasonal play I do every year. Um, but anyway, what are the seven sisters and how you use those to make your plans? Pretty neat the way they got this laid out. But anyway, uh, if you do fill out a survey when I issue the, the first copy of, of this next week, We'll send you a copy and let me know what you think. But I love the way it's laid out, short to the point. It's where the it's where the chocolate is, so to speak. And um, again, thank you for having me today. Think about that 7-Eleven rule when you're looking at the S&P and Nasdaq and to keep you on the right side. All right, Tom, thank you so much for joining us once again. And uh, for those of you that didn't know, that's actually, hold on one second, we're just having technical difficulty. Uh, for those of you, that was Diversified Trading Institution. And if you guys can actually see um, all the links that we posted to you guys, uh, and what you can do is actually have Tom's email, we posted it out to you as well. Um, and just want to thank you one, once again, one more time, Tom. We definitely appreciate you joining us.